everyone and welcome to this RJ Connect Tech Hub video tutorial. Today we're going to be focusing on how to set up an OpenVPN server on a Moxa EDR 18 uh, 2G SFP. So to start off, first power your device and connect to one of the LAN ports on your computer to your router. Then go to your browser and type in the default IP address for your router. This will take you to the login page. Log into your router using the default username and password. And you'll be greeted with a welcome message. Click continue. Once you're in the router, it will prompt you to change your default password for higher security. Click OK. The first thing we need to do is we need to set up our router for a WAN connection. So to do that, we click on Quick Setting Profiles, click on Interface Type Quick Setting, and you'll be guided through a wizard which allows you to set up your WAN connection. In our case, today we're going to be using LAN 2 as our WAN port. Simply click on the port to change the port type from LAN to WAN and click Next. Next, you'll set up your LAN interface IP configuration. I'm going to leave this as default and click Next. Next, you'll set up the interface for your WAN connection. Now you get different types of WAN connection, including static IP, dynamic IP, and point-to-point -point over Ethernet. In our example, we're going to be using dynamic IP. Click Next. I leave this enabled. I want my LAN side of my router to present me with IP addresses in this range. And I want to have those IP addresses natted to my WAN interface. So leave that on default and click Next. And then confirm your settings by clicking Apply. And this will restart your router uh, and apply these settings to your router. Once that's done, you'll be taken to the login page again, and you will log in using the default username and password as before. Now, before we go further, we need to do a couple of changes as well to the system. Go to your system settings, select date and time, and select sync with local device. This will synchronize the, the, the router's time, date and time, with your computer's date and time. And please make sure that you select the correct time zone for the area that you are in. In my case, I'm in South Africa, so I need to select GMT plus two. Click apply. This is an important step because we are using certificates to authenticate the connection. And for certificate authentication, you need the correct date and time to be set on your router and on your devices. Once that's completed, we need to go to our certificate management we'll, where we'll be generating our root CI certificate as well as our server and client certificates. Click on certificate management Click on CA Server or Certificate Authority Server, and then click on Certificate Create. Here you'll be given the option to create your certificate, your root CA certificate, as well as your client and server certificates. To do this, simply fill in the details as required for your region and your connection. Once you've entered all the details for your certificate, you can click apply, and this will apply the root CA certificate settings. Now let's go ahead and generate some client and 
service certificates. The first certificate I'll be creating would be the client. And then you type in a password and obviously keep this secret. Once you've entered this details, you need to click the add button to add the certificate to your certificate list. Now I'm gonna leave the client and service certificates uh, with the same details, except I'll change the common name to server. Click add again to add that certificate to your certificate list. Once you're done creating your certificates, you need to export these certificates for safekeeping. So I'm going to export my root CA certificate by clicking the root CA export button. This will prompt me to download the certificate file and I click save file to save that file to my computer. Now I'm going to export the PKCS12 file uh, to my computer. Be sure to apply your certificate list to your router before you try and export. Save your client and service certificate files to your PC by selecting the certificate in the certificate list and clicking PKCS-12 export. Click OK to save the file and all your certificates are now exported to your computer. Now we need to import the root CI certificate as well as the service certificate back into the router for the VPN connection. So to do that, first let's go to our trusted CI certificate, click the browse button, go to your downloads folder and select the CI cert file that we exported for the root CI certificate. Click open and click import. As you can see, we uploaded our CI certificate successfully. The next step is to upload our server certificate. So go to local certificate under certificate management and select the option to import the PKCS12 file that we generated. You'll be given the option to give your certificate a descriptive name. And you'll need to type in the password you use to generate the certificate. Bear in mind that you have to select the certificate before you enter the name and the password. Once you are done, you can click the import button to import that certificate into your certificate list for use with your VPN connection. It will be listed under your certificate list with the label, the issued to, issued by, as well as the expiry date for how long that certificate will last. Once you are done with your certificates, you can now go ahead and go to your VPN settings to start setting up your OpenVPN server. Go to VPN, select OpenVPN, and then select OpenVPN server. The first thing we'll do is we'll set up the server settings first. Click the enable checkbox to enable this VPN router settings. And then under interface type, we will be using a tap or bridge type connection. This type of connection will allow both layer two and layer three traffic to go across your secure tunnel. When you select the tunnel or router type interface, you'll be required to set up routing and netting to enable you to communicate with devices in your local network on your router. But for simplicity sake, will be using a tap or bridge type interface. It will be bridged with our LAN connection. So all the LAN ports uh, will be accessible through this tap connection. The rest of the settings will leave default. Uh, UDP port uh, protocol 
uh, port 1194. We'll be using Blowfish uh, CBC encryption algorithm as well as SHA-1 as the hashing algorithm. Now for better security, you can change this to a higher um, level of security, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I will leave this on default. As you can see, our imported CI certificate and service certificates are preloaded already into our server settings, so we don't need to uh, go select them. Keep Alive is enabled to keep the VPN connection alive so that when clients need to connect, they can connect automatically. We're not redirecting our gateway for now, but you can enable this if you want your VPN connection to be the source of your uh, gateway for your VPN clients. Client to client connections will enable um, clients that connect to this VPN to communicate with one another using the tunnel as well. And then allowing duplicate usernames will give you access um, to the VPN connection by using the same uh, user, uh, user, mat, uh, user account generated. Now to apply these settings, I simply need to select modify and apply to apply this VPN server settings. Once your server settings are applied, you can now go ahead and select user management to create a new user to connect to this VPN. Type in the username and the password for that user account. The remote network section in the user management will allow a user to, to access specific networks connected to your router. In our case, we want our user to access the default IP range. And simply click add to add the user to the VPN user accounts list and click apply to apply these settings to your router. Now that you have set up the VPN server as well as your user account to access the VPN, we can now go ahead and select server to user config. This option will export the OVPN file needed for OpenVPN clients to connect to this VPN connection. By simply clicking the user file export, we can export the OpenVPN client file needed to connect. Save this file to your computer, and you are done. On the router side, this is all you need to do to set up an OpenVPN server. Now we'll be focusing on connecting to this VPN from a Windows-based OpenVPN client. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to adjust the public IP address configured in the OVPN file. To do this, we go to the file that we just downloaded from the web console of the EDR, right click on that file, and we can select open with notepad. This will open a text-based editor for us to edit this VPN connection. As you can see, the remote IP used to connect to this VPN is 10.0.0.135. This is the WAN IP of the router, but it is not the public IP address to connect to the internet. So to get your public IP address, you can simply Google what's my IP and Google will present you with your public IP address. Copy this public IP address and paste it into your remote connection settings for your OpenVPN client. Save the file, close the editor, and you can now go ahead to your OpenVPN client and import this file to connect to the VPN.
select the file that we exported and edit it. Open the file and it will import that file into your OpenVPN GUI. Now for me to test this VPN properly, I need to connect to a mobile hotspot uh, from my phone. So I'm going to be connecting to my phone's um, personal hotspot. Once you've imported the file, you'll see you'll be able to access that file uh, through the OpenVPN GUI. And you can now go ahead and right click on your OpenVPN GUI in your task manager, click, and, click the OpenVPN client and select connect. It will prompt you to enter your username and password that you generated on the EDR. And once you've selected OK, it will connect to that VPN connection and you should be able to access the network as if you are connected locally. So to show you what that means is I can now type in the IP address for the OpenVPN router or the OpenVPN server directly in my browser. And it should take me directly to the, the web interface for the router. Now, as you can see, I only have an connection through my um, Wi-Fi connection. I do not have any Ethernet connectivity to the router at all. Not connected. So this is how easy and simple it can be to set up an OpenVPN server on your EDR. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you to see you in the next one.